This is fascinating, man. It, you know, it just goes to show you, if you're a douchey white dude, you can get money from anybody. I'm not talking about a nice white dude. You have to like go in and yeah. look like a complete asshole. Yeah. And people would just throw you money, man. Well, because, because the, the perception is that assholes get things done. Give me money, bro. Yeah. And like, this guy's got it. You yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. Take, you know, no, because this. I mean, look at him. He's got a five o'clock shadow. Yeah. He must know what he's talking about. Look, he's got a full hawk. And I know you and I used to do that. We used to do that a long time ago, Martin. I tell you, we just kind of part our ways. But we're still friends. We're still friends. I still do certain things for you, like wear nothing else but that shirt from DT Merch. Hey, you, you used to not wear shirts at all. So yeah. I'm happy to step up to this. I can, well, now I can wear that. Nothing else but a smile for you, Martin. Audio's free all the time. Seven days for free. And you know what? Uh, keep it. Don't give it back. It's all yours. We don't want it no more. We don't want it no more. You don't put your dirty hands on it. It's tainted now. Keep it. But you know something? Uh, when you do come back and you do decide to subscribe, we have a very easy way for you to do so right now. And it's never been easier to get that toasty goodness all over your body. Show mama how you got that toasty goodness all over your body. Show it to her. Oh, yeah. Man. Look at Full demo. Oh, yeah. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. No, don't, get, don't sit down yet. Grab that ass for mama real quick. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> She's seen it before. Yeah, but not like that. Let's have a very thorough, comprehensive talk about Fire Festival. Martin, the festival so fucked up they had to make two documentaries about it, man. <laughs> to document all that stupidity and foolishness that went on with it. And a legal business that also happened to follow. And y'all heard about the Fire Festival. That is... Uh, at the time, it was supposed to be, Martin, the festival to end all festivals. Coachella was just packing it up, ready to go. <laughs> Can't top that shit. Let's just go home. Yeah, this, is, uh, this was the one where the big draw to this wasn't even the music. I mean, music was going to be there. They, they, uh, uh, they were talking about how uh, a major laser was going to be there. Good music, uh, Kanye's company, so, uh, or his label. So they just figured Kanye was going to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, and the biggest uh, headline of Blink-182. <laughs> you know, people shouting out thousands of dollars to go see old Blinky. <laughs> One eight eight. <laughs> and, well, to hang out with models. Th yachts. But that was, that was it. They were, it was not the music that they were selling. They were pretty much selling you an image of a lifestyle that you could rub into all your poor friends' faces. And even though half of them couldn't even afford it themselves. <laughs> but hey, you know what? You, 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 uh, hey, man. An image is everything. Putting out there the right image is priceless, and that's what people are paying for. They wanted to show themselves hanging out with models. They wanted to show themselves out there in, 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 in uh, glamorous locations. And, of course, there was the music. But the money that you put out there just wasn't to look good. You were going to get gourmet food from Michelin chefs out there. You're going to get tents, but not just tents, tents that were... Luxury accommodations yeah, themselves. Lux luxury glamping and, and villas you could stay in if you want to up the price and yacht rides. And now imagine a lot of people's delight when they woke up the next day and went online and saw that while they were eating that shitty cheese sandwich, those people out there who shelled out thousands to, to, to be at this place were eating shitty cheese sandwiches in there. <laughs> <laughs> there was never so much shade in Freud at one time. <laughs> That nobody felt bad about. It was yeah, it was funny too. Cause they no people are actually some some people who are involved. They don't even want to blame the guy Billy uh, uh, McFarland. They don't even want to blame him. They said, "Man, that fucking cheese." <laughs> uh, so it was somebody that was going to do a, a documentary about this at some point, and that was you know that was just a given. But we didn't know there were going to be so many. I mean, like Vice has a documentary that's out there. But the biggest ones that were being talked about. Well, you had Netflix. Saying, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. They were, they were marketing for months, man. But somehow, Hulu beat them to the punch. Scooped. <laughs> Scooped, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and, it's, and, and it was funny because I'm sure that both of them were kind of, they, maybe they had this uh, in development separately. Had to be. Yeah, yeah, it had to be. Had to be. But it didn't stop Hulu from fucking with Netflix. <laughs> they just, <laughs> Hulu just sat back and somebody said, hey, 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 marketing department, don't spend no money. Why, why do we have to spend money when Netflix is doing that for us right now? Because <laughs> Netflix, they, they marketed this for months, months. And then about 48 hours before it was, so that, that, their documentary was supposed to come out, 
Hulu just stepped up in front of them. It was almost like I got one. Yo, yeah. It was almost like Netflix was in line at the airport for hours <laughs> and finally got to the counter. They're like, next, Hulu. Yeah, move, bitch. Hey. <laughs> it's yes, a board pass. <laughs> yes, I got my documentary right here. <laughs> I, wish, I wish that Netflix and, and Hulu could have just somehow worked their differences out and got along because both of these are roughly around an hour and 40 minutes mm -hmm. on average. And between the both of them, they, they have a good two-hour movie. They do. And most documentaries, I think, peter out at an hour. Yeah. But at least, I mean, I watched all the Hulu one and half of the Netflix one. And I can say with the Hulu one, I was expecting that usual, all right, hit that hour mark. And then I'm like, all right, y'all just repeating yourselves. It's boring. I was riveted. Yeah, man. You know. Uh, I could tear myself away from it. And, that, you know, and it's funny because I have to say that I was really drawn to both of them, too. And that's that's. That's a compliment considering that there's major overlap yeah. between both of them. Yeah. Um, Lots. A lot of the same footage in both of them. It's, it's, the, it's a, 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 lot of the same, uh, a lot of the same footage in both of them. They even interview with some of the same people mm -hmm. in both of these. Uh, both the, the people who attended and the people who are on the business side of it and the people who are kind of on the outside just looking in, just laughing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that brings the question with a lot of people. You know, we're in a, man, we live in a society where people just – they just can't do both. Everybody got to pick a team. Which one are you, Team Netflix or Team Hulu? I know. I'm like, damn, can I just can I do both? So people are asking, all right, well, shit, I can't, I can't watch both. <laughs> you know, I'll be betraying one or the other. No, you can because people are saying, which one is better? Well, I mean, hey, that's a fair question. That's all up in the air. Uh, can one possibly be better than the other one? Uh, is there one you should watch before the other? I'll tell you what. Let's start out with Netflix. Let's watch the Netflix trailer because... If you ask me, and this is just my opinion, I have a, I have a, and I have a good reason for doing it this way. Mm -hmm. I personally think that you should start with the Netflix documentary first, and that one's about not that much longer, about ten minutes longer than the one on Hulu. Mm -hmm. And let's go ahead and, and and look at the trailer, and I will explain to you why you should start with this one. I don't know if Martin will agree with me or not. Maybe I can convince him, or maybe you can convince me otherwise. All right, I just need to hear your reason. Let's go and take a look at the trailer for the Netflix documentary on fire. And it's called, what is it called? Fire, uh, the most fucked up festival in the world. Or something. <laughs> I, I forgot, it has some title in there. The greatest festival that never happened. The ne or? There you go, the greatest festival that never happened. Let's take a look at this, and we'll be back with our review of that one before moving on. To the Hulu documentary. If you had thousands of dollars to go on a trip to see Blink 182, that's on you. That is Darwinism <laughs> at its finest. <laughs> this is fascinating, man. It you know it just goes to show you if you a douchey white dude, you can get money from anybody. I'm not talking about a nice white dude. You have to like go in and yeah. look like a complete asshole. Yeah. And people would just throw you money, man. Well, because because the, the perception is that assholes get things done. Give me money, bro. Yeah. And like. This guy's got it. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, no, because this. I mean, look at him. He's got a five o'clock shadow. Yeah. He must know what he's talking about. Look, he's got a full hawk. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Yeah, this guy, he's wearing a collar. <laughs> you know, this this dude had nothing. Nothing. It, it's almost, it's, almost a, a, it, it's a case of if somebody had just simply made a phone call and then followed it up by saying no, this could have been stopped. Well, there's so many places where it could have been stopped, but it comes back to him being just a natural con man who knows how to tell people, I'm offering you that thing you want. Now, this one, I have to say out of both of them, this is the one that, this is the one that lets history speak for itself the most. This is the one that uses interviews, news clips, and footage uh, to build more of a timeline. Let, let all of the visuals and the testimony speak for itself for things that led up to the festival before, before it even happened. Because before, I mean, this is what gets me with this. This is why I say it. If you're just some scumbag looking, you know, frat boy who's going in with a little bit of confidence, you can get anything you want. At least that's what the, the way they make it uh, uh, feel or look like. Because this guy, he, uh, he, he had scams going on before he even got to this point. Yes. He, and even after that. <laughs> and it's not like they were under the radar. The dude was in all of the places, and they show you this in the documentary. They, let, they really do let this kind of business speak for itself, all the false businesses that he had. The dude was everywhere. He was, on, he was in places like Bloomberg. Mm -hmm. Bloomberg talking about a credit card. Again, selling a lifestyle, selling uh, uh, the perks of not even having the money to live this lifestyle, but just 
given the appearance of being able to do it. What is Magnesis? It's so, a card, but it's, it's a card, more than that. But I've always really been interested in payment tools and credit cards. And I was at dinner with 10 or 15 other entrepreneurs. And we all pull out our random debt. He just has a face that you just want to bash in. This dude, I mean, does, does he not? I mean, the moment you saw this dude, you would want to fucking kill him. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, big hoss looking ass. <laughs> you know, this this guy. And, you know, this, this it. And it's almost like watching the origins of a supervillain. <laughs> Who has a supervillain face, by the way. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, because what he, what he was doing, you see how this guy was, not, he was, he wanted to live the, the, he wanted to live the, he wanted to live that lifestyle himself. He wanted to take private jets. He wanted to drive in uh, Lamborghinis and, uh, and, 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 you know, fancy cars that were, that were uh, chauffeured around town. And, you get the feeling that this guy was selling that lifestyle because not only did he want to be in it, but he wanted to be the center of it for people. He wanted to be the hero of people mm -hmm. who would live in this. Uh, and the, in, 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 see, that's what I'm talking about. There are certain levels of shadiness that they get into with this, with this particular documentary by going so far into the business. Fire was not even, when it got to the Fire Festival, because Mag Magnuses was supposed, it was a credit card that was going to give you uh, perks. It was going to give you perks. Where let's say you go, it, it, you got these in these. It would like be like having a black card that piggybacked off the off, off your little uh, broke ass card that you got off your little Visa card, uh, and you know uh, these black cards where you can get all kind of uh, uh, big perks with those like penthouses. Uh, you can go into shows, uh, exclusive shows, and hard to get in clubs around town. That card was going to afford you that, and that that's what he was selling, and. It didn't take long for people to start saying, "Yeah, this this is bullshit, man. I'm not I'm not getting my perks. I've called to get into places. Mm -hmm. They're turning me, they, you know, they're, they're turning me around. Uh, I, you know, I'm not. I can't get into this penthouse that I want to. Cars aren't coming. Shows are not. Uh, they're, they're sold out. And tell me, there's no VIP for me. But, but well, he was uh -huh. delivering sometimes, but. It'd be like, oh, he goes on StubHub and pays way too much for the tickets that he promised. He was just running a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, yeah, but those were only a handful of people. That did not last long because he was talking about we had like, what was it, like uh, uh, 10,000 subscribers or something? Yeah. And ma majority of those quickly could not get what they were promised. And that was just, and, and, it, and you're right, it's like a Ponzi scheme. They showed how everything that he was doing was to like, Feed something else. Right. Another yeah. scheme that he had because fire before fire festival uh, happened, fire festival was supposed to be something that was just going to feed the app, and the app was supposed to be, uh, it was supposed to be tender for celebrities. Right. You know, if you want to like if, if, <clears throat> for booking if, celebrities. For, for booking celebrities, like if you were rich and you want to have uh, Rick Ross come over and play your kids bar mitzvah, then you know that's you would swipe left left or right or, left or right on that, uh, and Rick Ross would. Come over to your house and and play your song or something. By the way, he never leaves either. He, he's been in my house. Dude took the biggest shit in my house. <laughs> the problem at the heart is that <clears throat> the bar has been so lowered on what makes somebody a celebrity mm -hmm. that people feel more like I could be that person if I just spend a little bit extra money. Yeah. If I just get this extra plastic surgery, if I do my makeup this way, yeah. I could be them. Because yeah, this person they're worshiping doesn't really have a talent or do anything. They've just put them up there. Yeah. And, and, but they also, they in the process sur surrender their power to them. The best story out of both these documentaries, hands down, goes to Netflix. Out of both of these, they were able to come across the most what the fuck story and testimony out of, uh, out of both of them. Uh, you know, people are talking about these, but people cannot stop putting these memes out and discussing Andy King. Andy King, he was uh, he he was Billy McFarlane's mentor and a businessman on uh, on his own, and he was considered to be one of the big producers of Fire Festival. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and and so this man kind of has clout of his own. Now there was a point here. If you watch the documentary, you know what we're talking about. Did you see this? Yeah. There's a point where. They had water coming in for all the attendees. And because they didn't do things right, water is held by customs. And Billy got so desperate. He's like, you know what, Andy, you are, you are a resident gay guy and my mentor. And you said you'd do anything for me. Uh, the guy over at customs said that, you know, if you go over there and suck his dick, then he'll, he'll release the water. Right. And now this is where you think like Andy King's going to be like, are you at your fucking mind? Right. 
No, no, <laughs> you know, no. Uh, this isn't. Now, this, this I didn't get this clip from uh, the official source uh, uh, from Netflix, but it does have the, the testimony from Andy King himself about when that question, that situation was posed to him, what he decided to do. You're our wonderful gay leader, and we need you to go down. Will you suck dick? Hey, 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 uh, Andy, it's Billy McFarland. Okay, I didn't know that was it. <laughs> what the hell, man? Yeah, what? That's what Netflix documentary did go, what the fuck? <laughs> and the, yeah, <laughs> Mars like, one of your videos? <laughs> I'm sorry. How many times did you rewatch this? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> uh, he said that he would actually think it over. Yeah, he said he went home and he gargled. <laughs> he actually mouth. He actually put in mouthwash. Uh-huh. And, you know, he got, went down there ready to like. All right, put on a little. Do what I put do. on a little lipstick. <laughs> put on the high heels and came out and said, "Hey, you know what?" He said that he was ready to do it. He said he was ready to go over there and get it done. Now, fortunately, when he got there, the guy said, "Ah, oh, man, I didn't want you to do that." But you know, if you could just. Pay us. <laughs> You're right. You know, or you can bend over. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> yeah, if you could just make sure we get paid. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, all right. <clears throat> Let me get down here, man. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> nobody's getting paid. That shows you the power that Billy McFarlane had. Because I, now I'm looking at this and I'm seeing, I'm seeing, you know, <laughs> either, either things are really that bad, you really like Billy that much, or you just really want to suck a dick. <laughs> You know, yeah, our, some of column A, some yeah. of column B. Uh, maybe Billy's a Jedi. <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> Customs has the dick you're looking for. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. But that shows you that there is something going on with this guy and his power of persuasion, man. If anything, they show you how this had no infrastructure, no no reasonable time frame, but they managed to sell it uh, on on FOMO. When, that's what everybody says: the fear of missing out on something. Before anything materialized, people just saw pictures and it was said that it was going to be the greatest. It's going to be the best. You can't miss it. And people just joined in. Well, hey, man, kudos to Fuck Jerry Media who did the whole ad campaign because that's what sells it. You see all that blue water and models and they just throw up words saying this is going to be the greatest thing. This is the cultural event you don't want to miss out on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you don't want to miss out. <laughs> um you know, one of the things they do show uh, numerous times, though, is how people told them uh, that you shouldn't do this from the very beginning. They were saying, look, I'm telling you right now, stop. Don't you know this is not going to come together. If you don't have the time to do it, then you're going to fail. I believe there, it was a it was a financier who told a company not to invest in this. Yeah. I forgot his name. Isn't it Calvin Wells? Uh, I think so. But that that's in the that's in. No, I know that's in the Hulu because yeah. I couldn't find this picture anywhere else. But that's in the Hulu. And and. Uh, this, but he pops up in both of them. This guy loves talking shit about it. He does, because he kept telling people early on, like, uh-uh, this guy's a scammer. This is not going to work. So so far as uh, creating a Twitter account, telling people, like, hey, you know, uh, the, uh, he forget, what was it, a uh, fire festival fraud? Yeah. And he said, I'm putting pictures up telling you this does not exist. This is the reality of what you're seeing versus what's been put up there. And he got they, he got threatened with, uh, with a lawsuit. Mm-hmm. And it, now, and you know, it's funny because that's, it, it shows you how when people were, and that's the, the, the business side of things on how if people were coming in and criticizing, they, they were replaced by agencies or they were fired from their jobs or they were just ignored, yeah, turned now, away. Comcast was going to invest in, with, in, them, in the whole Fire app and he came to them and said, listen, this is what's going on. Mm-hmm. Just do this. Just wait until after the fire fest before you invest. Yeah. And they were like, all right, we'll do that. I think that they, they both show you the disaster, but I think the Netflix one, and like you might, you might see it better than I do. Uh, you know, maybe I missed something, but I think this one showed how it really fell apart. Uh, they really delved into the disastrous part of it. You know, in zombie movies where the, the, like the, the zombie apocalypse first hits. Mm-hmm. And everybody's scrambling for it, you know, mm-hmm. to, to, to to survive. They quickly showed how everybody got there and had fun. They were trying to make the most of it. And they said, oh, well, we can wait another day. And by the time they got there that night, people were fighting over mattresses. They were fighting over toilet paper. Mm-hmm. People were running into other people's tents. And they were, like, drunk and dazed. It was it, – and when they show you that, it looks like a horror movie. They show people in the darkness just roaming around. Just, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, – you walk away from this mad – from the Netflix uh, documentary, you walk away just so and because one of the things that they do in the Netflix documentary that they don't do in the Hulu one, 
the Hulu documentary wants to show more of this uh, from a humorous uh, angle. Uh, you know, uh, they, they, they definitely do it with more humorous production. Uh, this one is heartbreaking to see what they do at the end of it because they left the island and they left they left businesses in shambles, man. Mm-hmm. They ruined people's life's uh, livelihood. Uh, there was one woman who said they completely just drained my savings and I have nothing to show for it after this. Uh, they showed you was just that a woman who, who lives on the island and worked on it. She was. Yeah, she ran a restaurant and she was and she was uh, serving people uh, when they needed it. Uh, she was helping. She was she was bringing any, any kind of resource that she could to get these these kids by. And at the end of it, they left. She got no reimbursement, didn't even get an apology. And they show just, uh, you know, what I think if there's one thing I, I really take uh, issue with with the Hulu and they they show you a lot, but they don't show you the devastation of the people that they did on the island, man. And, you know, I don't know. You can argue for a lot of things. It's maybe it's from a poverty area. Maybe it's from a race area. But they have remained uh, they have remained the, the, the least glamorous part of this story. And their stories are hardly heard. So that, you know, you walk away from this pissed, man, uh, which is why it's the perfect. That's the perfect one to watch first, because okay. I wish I had done it that way. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying, because you, you get angry and that anger carries over so well into the Hulu documentary, because the Hulu documentary at this point, the Hulu documentary, they're just kind of like, you know what? Uh, let's just talk shit. You know, let's just let's just let's just talk shit and let's just call people out. You know, are yeah. are you are you mad? Good. Now let's point some fingers. Yeah, that's what that's what I liked about. It. I I preferred the Hulu documentary because it really did point fingers, and they had mm-hmm. they had Billy McFarlane there on the hot seat, and they don't and they don't treat him like well he's just some hapless visionary who's a bit naive and and delusional. They go, this guy is a con man. He's been doing this shit for a long oh, time. Oh no, no, let's. Let's go ahead and watch it. The- and they get somebody from, from Fuck Jerry Media to go, don't, don't let them act like they're innocent. They knew what was going oh, on. Oh, no. No, no. This, this one's the watch. Get mad and bring that anger over into this one because they talk some shit about everybody. Let's take a look at the, doc, at the trailer for the Hulu documentary, and we'll be back with our quick review of that one. And there were never millions of dollars paid. He's engaging in criminal acts and wire fraud. How do you respond to that <laughs> if you can't say yes or no, then <laughs> answer is probably yes. I love his answer. Is, well, people have called me a lot of yeah, things. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Shit, if you call me a sociopath, I'm probably gonna say no before you get the path. Right. <laughs> you know, no. That's not me. Yeah, I know where you're going. No, that's not me. If you, how do I answer this <laughs> in a way that I don't perjure myself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you. <laughs> you, you know, somebody say it's a very, I mean, you don't get a more straightforward question like that. It's, it's a lot of those in, a, in those interviews with him. It's a very straightforward <laughs> yes or no question. And chances are that it should be no. Uh huh. Hey, man, are you fucking crazy? Uh, 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 you know, you've got to think about it. <laughs> hey, did you kill somebody? Uh, 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 yeah, you know, the. If you can't say no, that's a, that's a difficult question. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a complex answer for that. Yeah, it shouldn't be. No. If you <laughs> if you can't give a no within a millisecond, then chances are it's probably yes. Is there smoke coming yeah. out of his ears when you ask him that question? Hey, Andy, you suck that man's dick. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't get the money either, did you? <laughs> a lot of people are upset that this is. Uh, documentary that is the documentary that brought Billy McFarlane over because that's the biggest difference they got Billy McFarlane uh the producers of this now the directors uh Jenna First and uh Julia Willoughby and Nelson I don't uh I, I don't know or Nassen I'm sorry I don't know how much they had to do with the decision I'm sure they wanted him but both the documentaries were trying to get him Hulu wanted that they said they paid him Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars could be, it's, it, and, but it's rumored that it might be like a hundred and twenty-five thousand. So no one knows if it's he, a he whole. Needs whatever he can get to pay off. The, oh yeah, the, 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 his debt. He that. Um, let me tell y'all something. For, for those millions that, that y'all are owed, you ain't gonna ever get that back. Mm. You ain't gonna ever see that. This one dude, he was happy that he the judge ruled that he gets five million dollars, and they said he's still waiting. Yeah, yeah, you bro, you ain't gonna see that. Yeah, you, even if Billy did get that money, he's just gonna put it into some other oh, bullshit. Another, another, yeah, yeah. I I I love that. While he was on bail, he still tried to get another scam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. 
hey man, can I get my five million dollars? Nobody can get you free tickets to Astro World. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want my fucking money, man. <laughs> you know, you you go into this documentary mad if you watch the Netflix the Netflix one. And so when you watch this, it is so good to see him squirm. Oh, yeah. It's so good to see him get put on the hot seat. And there are a lot of moments. That moment where he he, he just because there are moments where they catch him in a lie, and he does exactly that. He just he he just goes to another planet. Mm-hmm. He just tunes out. Yeah. And or or was, when they really start hitting him with questions, like I can't comment on that. I can't comment on that. Yeah. Yeah. You could. You just won't. <laughs> There's even a moment where he says, "I'm gonna go take a 15 minute break," and like you coming back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all I was like he ain't coming back. Hey, lock lock that. <laughs> follow him. Lock that door. <laughs> catch, catch him. <laughs> you know this. Stop payment on the check. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, it, it, he just shuts down the people. You can even peer people in the set belly. <laughs> right. Belly. <laughs> Billy. Billy just starts drooling and shit. <laughs> Billy, are you fucking crazy? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, yes or no, man. He does go out of his way to not try to impl- uh, implicate Ja Rule. But, uh, yeah, for all Ja Rule's talk about how, like, man, that wasn't me. That was all him. There is way too much footage of him promoting. I, you know, I would say something about that because uh, with Ja Rule, because see, they, they they go deep into Billy. Uh, they like watching the Hulu documentary. You thought that you, you thought you saw all the levels of shadiness that he could go with business. Nah, no. man, they show they show that from the beginning. He was dealing with other people that were fucking up. Uh, another another dude named uh, Audrey Mac McClellan. Oh yeah, they, and, and and I'm talking about the shit is creepy. He's an oil and gas guy, big proponent for natural gas. Uh, turns out, Billy just knew how to attract him, man. Turns mm-hmm. out this guy, he was rigging the system to try to like get uh, lower prices for oil and gas. Uh, once he was indicted by a court, they found his ass like a day later burning in a car. Yep. And it's like, wow, this went to some, like this got sinister. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like this really is turning into a horror uh-huh. movie. Uh-huh. And, you know, they show you just how the levels of darkness Billy really goes, man. But... You talk about your boy Ja Rule. I, man, I laughed at that. If y'all know Ja Rule, there's even some millennials. I'm surprised they, I'm surprised they were even able to pitch the millennials on Ja Rule. Me too. Ja, ja Rule should have been like, Ja who? <laughs> <laughs> you want me? <laughs> I know, but, but me? Yeah. Ja, ja, and, and, and apparently, I guess people knew him because uh, Billy was able to put him, pull him in. And Ja Rule, Ja Rule the rapper. Not to be confused with Ja Rule the stockbroker. <laughs> yeah. It was funny having Ja Rule in this because uh, <laughs> that, 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 that guy that I showed you, Calvin Wells, from earlier, he said, man, the, the, the guy, for, uh, that's him in the, in the Hulu documentary. He, he said probably the most common sense thing out of all of this. He said, y'all should have known this was fucked up when they brought in Ja Rule. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> He said, he said who, the, who is selling anything with Ja Rule? Right. Ja Rule can't even sell Ja Rule. <laughs> he said, the moment I heard that Billy McFarlane was working with Ja Rule, I went straight to Dave Chappelle. Stop worshiping celebrities so much. Just don't listen, don't pay attention. I remember right around September 11th, uh, Ja Rule was on MTV. Who gives a fuck what Ja Rule thinks at a time like this, nigga? This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> ja Rule couldn't sell me a bean pie. How the fuck <laughs> would fucking listen to ja, ja Rule, man? Now, this nigga went to jail for tax fraud. Right. And who, who knows and, what else? And, and, and carrying a firearm. And carrying firearms. And now he's on now he's on Fox News talk, talking about a, 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 a black platinum card that you could put on your Visa card. It's, it's a very unique situation. Whenever you can marry the affluent with the less fortunate, you what get. What means when well, you can sucker people uh-huh. and promise them shit you can't give them? Yeah. Then you know I mean, and and even though Billy sitting on the side and just have Ja Rule selling this shit, man, and that's how. And and and, and, and it was weird. Like Ja Rule would have been a nice guy to just to sell it with, and, and and I could see if it was his idea, he teamed up with somebody who could actually get the the resource to yeah. do it. But Ja Rule should not have been the one because there was even a part in. Uh, I believe it was in the Netflix uh, uh, documentary where they things have already fallen apart. They don't need Ja Rule no more, but yet there's a team of people sitting around a phone listening to Ja Rule remotely. Sure. And Ja Rule talking like he's the C- CEO of Oracle or something. Man, we smart people. You mean ain't a fucking thought out of one of y'all. We family, y'all. Let's get it together and spin this shit. And people are like, mm-hmm. 
You know, he has a point. You know, it's like, <laughs> y'all fucking deserve to fail, man. Oh, yeah. They ain't bringing people in doing testimony like, well, you know, I was sitting by the whole time and thinking, like, maybe this could be, uh, you know, uh, maybe this could come together. Maybe this could really be something. No, they brought one dude in on Hulu named Delroy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Delroy is Delroy was going to spill the beans on everybody. <laughs> Delroy from the beginning. He, <laughs> he said, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Delroy said, Delroy said, I look, I'm a bartender. I got Billy McFarlane drunk just so I could hear the stupid shit that's gonna come uh-huh. from his mouth. And then when I was done, I let him sober up and I said, you know, you gonna you ain't gonna do this shit. <laughs> and when they said, no, nah, he's and he said, and Billy said, nah, man, I got it. He's like, okay. <laughs> this dude just sat back and just laughed mm-hmm. the whole time. Uh, you know, they, they, it wasn't any pussyfooting around. They had people who just went in, told it like it was. And the and really? You mentioned uh, uh, fuck Jerry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what people really say now. Right. <laughs> they thought they were so smart. Yeah. Is that a flavor of ice cream? No, fuck Jerry. <laughs> no, this, this, the, the fuck Jerry was a media company. I just go into Jerry Media. But they, they are saying, you know something? There's a lot of people who can be held accountable here. But fuck Jerry, who started by Elliot Tre- uh, 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 Treble right here. Uh, he, they had one of his employees giving testimony. And they... They went in at the first, like they were just kind of asking questions, like they're trying to find some dirt. And then it got to like, it, they got to that point where, you know, you fucked up now, right? <laughs> right. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> he told on himself as well. Yeah, man, this dude was just thinking, <laughs> how much did they have this dude drink before he got up? <laughs> yeah, bro. I mean, yeah, you know, we were getting paid and we said whatever. <laughs> Even at the end of it, he just kind of, man, fuck y'all. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sign up for this, bro. <laughs> Jesus, man. I thought we were friends. <laughs> you got to edit that out, right? <laughs> Dude, took, he said he took the microphone off that. Fuck you. <laughs> God damn it. I said he even quit his job after he was done. They try to go in and make comparisons to Woodstock. Woodstock even from the 90s. But with this, uh, I, I call bullshit on that, man, because, uh, you know, Woodstock – was something where, man, look, these pe- these people swimming in dirty ass water. <laughs> right. Half these kids were broke. Uh-huh. You know, they were, you know, they 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 were hungry. They were, you know, they 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 had to uh they had to uh 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 uh, uh what do you call it? Uh 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 hike hitchhike. hitchhike. Uh-huh. They had to hike and hitchhike to get to these places. They had no money. They were really doing it to be together. Now maybe they they you know under peace and love, maybe they were naive, but they really were trying to do it under something that was bigger than themselves. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 so I, that's why I say this, that's bullshit, man. Trying to compare that y'all to, doing it under Ja Rule. Yeah, exactly. No, y'all, you know they they, you got these people today who are doing it because it's it's all self centered, man. It's all self serving. Mm. So that's not even a comparison. Yeah, Woodstock might have been a disaster, but you know why it was it was not like looked at in a bad light later because out of all the things that happened, people were there for each other. Well, they, they don't. They don't compare it so much to the original Woodstock. They compare it, compare it to the the nineties Woodstock. They compare it. Well, they tried. They tried. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, well, and, well, well, yeah. But the other one guy saying that, like, well, you know, they had that big festival Woodstock, and it seemed like it was going to be a disaster, but it worked. And out. even in the nineties, man, it was all people there who were trying to like help. You know, they were helping each other. Shit. At least they had music. <laughs> you <laughs> <There> know, <is> that. <laughs> it's documentaries like these that make you want to give up on life and just become evil, man. Like I just want to start a cult after this. You know, some people say you got one already. Yeah, we got a few. <laughs> but it just makes you. I see this all these growing, drop by drop. I see these televangelists. I see these. I see people like Billy McFarlane. I just say to myself, "There's a lot of stupid people out there to get rich off of," and it's being harder and harder for me to be a decent person. I was like, "You ain't no fucking decent person." <laughs> You talking about? Yeah, I feel like you're losing that fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah, people. I, that's how I would watch these, and those are the reasons why. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but I really do think carrying that anger over from the Netflix one into the Hulu one and watching Billy just on the hot seat mm-hmm. and seeing everything else where people do get seriously jabbed <laughs> and saying, "Yeah, you were at fault too." I think that that's satisfying to see after that. So I, I, I yeah. To, to conclude, I think that is worth watching both of them, uh, if you can. Okay. Uh, I, well, I, I agree with you as far as the, the order in which to watch. Uh, it sounds like a, there's a lot of good stuff in the Netflix one that I, I hadn't. Oh, so that's the one you didn't to. finish? Yeah, that's the one I didn't finish. I, I watched all the Hulu one. And I, what I felt watching it too, I mean, you know, hey, I didn't finish the, the Netflix one, and I watched mm-hmm. the second, and sometimes that has an effect. But I found that the Netflix one 
moved at that at, at that slower pace that so many documentaries move at, where I'm just kind of watching, going like, okay, come on, move, step, step it along. You, you're, you're making everything seem too important. And you're right. It is more or just like, hey, here's some things that happen, and you make up your mind. But the, the Hulu one was, was very direct, moved at a great pace, was, uh, was humorous when it needed to be, and just kept me going. It, it really captured my attention, like sucked me in to where cause my original plan was knowing I couldn't mm. watch both was to watch an hour of each and watch that Hulu one. I couldn't tear away from it. Well, you know what? I, that, and see, that's a good thing to have that both of our opinions, because that's your favorite out of both of them. And mm -hmm. I think because that that one definitely is the most is the, the most produced out of it, like uh, where Netflix just kind of spoke on its own with the clips and footage and the people. Uh the Hulu one has, a, you know, they use uh, old footage. They got, you know, uh, uh, and they got graphics that they use. You know, they, and, and when I say old footage, I'm talking about old footage from movies and cartoons to just kind of accentuate a point. Uh, you know, so this one is definitely the more produced out of the two. Uh, and, and just it's just your taste. I like documentaries that kind of speak on their own and are less flashy. But, I, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. I see that you prefer the other. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, it's uh, he'll be the one to buy tickets for the next fire festival. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How translate you that. like things that are produced and flashy more <laughs> and finished <You> know? <laughs> and actually happen. Did you finish the Netflix? one? <laughs> You're like, no, but it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope that you enjoyed that video, and I hope that you subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you really love us, check out our main site, DoubleToasted.com, where you can not only see a longer-form version of this video, but also the live streams that we do almost every night of the week. Support us at DTMerch.com, and remember to always, always, always stay toasty.